Okay. Let's bring out Steve Kornacki to, uh, as a palate cleanser. Steve, he runs the big board as national political correspondent for NBC News and MSNBC. His book is The Red and the Blue, The 1990s and the Birth of Political Tribalism. Steve Kornacki is over here. <laughs> What a pleasure to meet you. I Thank love you. watching you because, you know, everyone has an opinion, as you can see. Uh, and you're the guy who doesn't. I love that. You're, <laughs> jo you're Joe Friday, just the facts, ma'am. Well, thank you. And I really appreciate that. And, and also your enthusiasm for the subject of politics is so infectious and so real. And I'm wondering, where do you get that? My father was a, a news guy in radio. Yeah. News. That's where I got it. Where did you get it? You know, I, 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 uh, election nights, there's always something. At a young age, I kind of I followed a governor's race when I was a kid in Massachusetts, and the campaign was fascinating, but the election night, just watching, it was the map of Massachusetts, it was 1990, it was a very close race, and watching the political character of each town and city get revealed, almost like pieces in a puzzle, and at the end of it, I felt like, I was in sixth grade, but I felt like I understood a little bit about the state I lived in, mm. and I try to take that to every election I cover. Wow. So, um... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, this one. The cycles change so quickly that, you know, between the time the show started and now, maybe you have a whole bunch of different information. <laughs> right. But, like, I was feeling pretty good about the Senate only, like, a week ago, yeah. and now I feel like I, uh, it was a waste of money, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, look, if the, if the election were held tomorrow, everybody went out and voted tomorrow, I don't think there's a scenario where the Democrats get the Senate. That's so um, disappointing. And, and so important, the Senate. It's, um, yeah. I mean, now this, now, this is the thing, though. I think there could be two tracks that are developing here. Because think about it this way. There are three races. The Democrats have to win one of them to get a shot at the Senate. And those three races would be North Dakota, yeah. Tennessee, or Texas must win one if you're a Democrat to be in the game. If you get shot out of all three, you're out. Now, the reason the Senate seems to be fading from the picture for Democrats is they've gotten bad to devastating news in all of those states this week. But think about those, those states and the political character of them. North Dakota, Trump won it by 36 points. Tennessee by 26. Texas by 9. Control of the Senate is being decided in Trump country, in deep red right. pro-Trump states. Now, flip it over to the House. Democrats need a net gain of 23 seats to pick up the House. How many districts are there in the House that are Republican-held but that voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016? The answer is 25. So the math gets different in the House. When you start talking right. about where we've seen the Democratic I, yeah. energy, it could work in the House and be useless in the Senate. Useless in the Senate. That's my takeaway there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. not. We still have time. No, we, <laughs> and, 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 and it could be anything. I mean, we really don't know. And also, it's so... I mean, this is a lot about what your book is about, where the tribalism right. started. I feel like it's so tribal now that in years past, you could go against someone in your own party if they did something outrageous. And now everything is just my party, my color. It's almost like the Crips and the Bloods. Same colors. <laughs> well, right? hey, listen, he, there was a poll taken in 2016... There was a poll taken in 2016 that essentially asked people, you know, would you be upset if your son or daughter married somebody from the other political party? Right. And for Democrats and Republicans, both, answer, both answered yes over 60%. I mean, those are numbers you used to get for interracial marriage. Right. And that is how personal the definition of parties become for people. This idea of red and blue, we think red and blue have been with us forever, or at least all of modern political history. They really originated on election night 2000. It was the first time we looked at an election map in a generation and saw a close race. And we didn't just see a close race. We saw deep divisions that were regional, cultural, demographic, and they've been with us since. You blame Newt Gingrich for a lot of this. And mm -hmm. that made me happy. I don't... <laughs> um, but... And that was right after Clarence, the Clarence Thomas... I, I always thought it was the Clarence Thomas that really kicked the Bork and then into Clarence Thomas that really kicked off this new era where the other party, the other people are the other, mm. to where we get to this point now where it's very, very frightening. I, I'm frightened because Trump talks every day about us in some way. The, the enemy of the people is the press, um, talks about that we're an angry mob. I mean, when you talk about angry mob, that sounds like he's setting up at some point, you know, we're gonna need martial law until we find out what the hell is going on. <laughs> um, you see any way back from that? Jeez, well, it's, it's, so when you mentioned Newt Gingrich, where I think the origin of all of this comes from is the thing that Gingrich got early on in his career 
ahead of almost anybody else in politics was that the future of politics was in nationalizing politics, and that media was evolving in a way that was conducive to that. And Gingrich was living in a world in the 70s and 80s, on his way up, where Republicans were dominating in presidential elections. I mean, Reagan got 49 states in 84, Bush Sr. Right. got 40 in 88. So the Gingrich theory was simple. You nationalize politics, you make every Democrat in everybody's backyard look just like this national party they've been rejecting, you win everything. Right. And the media, you know, the proliferation of cable news, all of the other sources of information, Gingrich found a way to nationalize through this expanding media. But what happened was he gets to his highest moment in 1994, gets the Congress for the first time in 40 years, and politics is nationalized. Now people start looking at the Republican Party differently. They start looking at it as the party of Newt Gingrich, a party that now has a heavy Christian uh, conservative influence in it and maybe didn't before. And Gingrich was half right in his vision of politics, basically. Half the country, was roughly, was going to respond uh, to his version but the other half was going to respond against it. And, and I think that's where we are in politics now. It's as much about what you and your party are for as who you are against and who is against you.